Welcome to this virtual tour of the Parish Church of St John the Baptist in Froome, Somerset. You can navigate this 360 degree tour by clicking on the video and moving the mouse. This will allow you to view each scene however you'd like. We will highlight points of interest to you throughout the video. Time codes will appear for the audio commentary in each space. Click to move to the next space whenever you're ready. Welcome to our parish church dedicated to St John the Baptist. The prayer of welcome on the floor was written by Thomas Ken, a former Bishop of Bath and Wells. The nave of the church evidences substantial Victorian restoration work, including the distinctive roundels set between the arches which depict parables and miracles from the Gospels. They were inspired by work by Donatello that the 19th century vicar Reverend William James Early Bennett saw when he visited Florence in 1851. On each side of the nave, a series of windows depict the life and death of St John the Baptist. Originals by the Hardman Company of Birmingham were replaced with near-identical design by the Kemp Company in the 1920s. On the west wall, there are statues of St George, St Andrew, St Aldhelm and St Alban by James Forsyth, who was also responsible for the unique external Via Crucis. Halfway down the nave, the arches change shape, reflecting the different style of work in the 1420 extension of the medieval building to its present size. Up above the nave altar, the rood screen was installed in 1892. It was designed by Charles Emer Kemp, and woodcarvers from Oberammergau were involved in its manufacture. The pulpit bears images of eight great preachers around it, Moses and Noah, Elijah and John the Baptist, Peter and Paul, Chrysostom and Ambrose. And during Bennett's time, many of the great preachers of the Oxford movement preached here. Pusey, Keeble, Gore, Benson and others. Close to this spot, in the year 685, St Aldhelm founded a mission church and community, the community that has grown over the centuries to be the town of Froome. His choice was no doubt influenced by the presence of fresh water springs rising from the ground at a place overlooking a river crossing in the ancient Selwood Forest. In the south wall, the Timeline Window by Mark Angus was installed in 1986 following the 1300th anniversary commemorations. Symbols show the church at the heart of Froome and events through history such as the plague of 1349, which had devastating impact locally. On the north wall, a couple of fragments of stone from the eighth and ninth centuries are all there is to see of the Saxon period. We know from William of Malmesbury that the Saxon church was substantial and stone built. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle records that in 955, King Edred died at Froome. He would have been lain in state here before being taken to Winchester for burial. The stone fragments were set here in the 19th century when an old hagioscope, an opening giving bell ringers line of sight to the high altar, was blocked up. Bells have called people to worship for centuries. The floor bears marks of where each ringer kept one foot wedged under a leather strap to prevent accidents whilst they rang. The present peal of eight bells date from as early as the 1620s, the heaviest weighing one and a half tons. This ancient chapel's seen many uses, giving relief to the poor, storage of the pumps for the fire service provided by the parish until 1828, a font stood here in the 1830s and 1840s. In 1844, Longleat, then patrons of the parish, renovated the chapel in memory of Bishop Thomas Ken. Ken was deprived of the bishopric of Bath and Wells in 1691, and he died in retirement at Longleat and was brought here to be buried outside the chancel in 1711. His hymns, such as Awake My Soul and Praise God from whom all blessings flow, and his prayers enrich the life of the church to this day. The fine window is by Michael O'Connor, 
and on the floor there's mint and tile work bearing a mitre and Ken's initials. The south window is by William Wales, who worked with Augustus Pugin. On the north wall hangs a portrait of Bishop Thomas Ken, given to Vicar Bennett by parishioners. On the east wall, a plaque notes Bennett's personal gift of the east window of the chancel, in memory of his son who died in Burma and his daughter who died in the Punjab. Bennett had removed plaques commemorating other individuals from the chancel as a matter of principle, and so even the plaque relating to his gift is discreetly located outside the chancel. We stand close to where the medieval high altar was, the chancel having been extended eastward in the 1420s. A fragment of alabaster, now in the Ashmolean Museum, indicates that there was a significant medieval alabaster reredos, including the harrowing of hell scene amongst its panels. When Vicar Bennett came from Pimlico in 1852, he found a parish church that was pulpit-centred, galleried, full of box pews, many with their backs to the altar and font, and with many repairs outstanding. The chancel was panelled with mahogany, with a portrait of St Peter hanging above the altar where the old east window had been blocked up in the 1760s, and the floor tiled black and white. Bennett's restoration work of the 1850s and 1860s was extensive and radical. He founded a choir school to enrich the worship, and shifted the focus from the old pulpit in the nave to the high altar in the refurbished chancel. Only the side window by O'Connor remained. Wall paintings were added, and the style of worship transformed in the spirit of the Oxford movement. The east window by Clayton and Bell depicts the crucifixion and resurrection, as well as images relating to St John the Baptist, the Blessed Virgin Mary, St John the Evangelist, and St Catherine. In its time, it would have been quite controversial, as it includes the non-scriptural scene of the pseudo-martyrdom of John the Evangelist. The Reredos by Forsyth behind the altar includes the central scene of the Last Supper, flanked by scenes from the Exodus, where the people are sustained by fresh water flowing from the rock and by the gift of manna in the wilderness. The organ that had been on a gallery at the West End was taken down and rebuilt in a side chapel, it was last rebuilt in the 1920s and features a pneumatic action. The 19th century processional banner preserved on the south side hangs where the other end of the hagioscope from under the tower would have been. For centuries, this was the private chapel of the Lords of the Manor of the Vallis Manor. A transi cadaver style memorial of the Leversedge family, once central, now lies on the north side of the chapel. On the walls are a number of memorials to members of the Boyle family who later acquired the manor, including work by Westmacott. After some years of dispute with the Boyle family, the chapel by then in considerable disrepair was taken over by the parish in 1862 and restored. The west side window by Arthur O'Connor, with its strong pre-Raphaelite influence, survives, though others of his windows were replaced with Kemp-style glass in the 1920s. Like the earlier O'Connor windows, the Kemp replacements include scenes from the life of the Blessed Virgin Mary that are non-scriptural, such as the presentation of Mary at the temple and the betrothal of Mary and Joseph. The niche and Pieta in the northeast corner were previously central to the east wall, and they were relocated when the Tower Reredos was installed in the 1920s. The metal screen on the south side is by Singers of Froome, makers of the Statue of Justice on the Old Bailey, and is distinctive in having been both a screen and a gaslight fitting, the lilies being fitted with mantles as gaslights. Before 1408, we would have been standing outside the body of the church. The archway and window frame on the east side of this chapel have been external features from the late 12th until the early 15th centuries. The chapel was founded and dedicated to St Nicholas by John Cabell and John de Froome. 
and the pseudo-heraldic glass in the north window from 1517 relating to the Cabell family of Keyford is the only glass in the church that has survived from before the parliamentary order of 1643, when all stained glass bearing images was required to be removed. A panel on the south side notes the connection between the Cabell family who founded the chapel and their descendants in Virginia, USA. The Stevens Memorial is one of many that Bennett removed from the chancel during restoration work. There was a 19th century window here by Lavers and Barrow depicting St. Nicholas as a bishop in apostolic succession and scenes of infant and adult baptism, but it was removed in the 1960s and only the 16th century glass left in place. The memorial to members of the Locke family on the west side is designed by one of the Patey family, a family involved in much of the Georgian work in Bristol. The medieval font was rediscovered and restored to a position in the nave in 1844, and then in Vicar Bennett's time relocated here with surrounding tilework by Clayton and Bell, depicting seven vices and virtues. The symbolism of stepping from vice to virtue as you draw closer to the font. Here, where so many have begun their Christian journey in baptism, we end our video tour and assure you of a welcome if and when you're able to come and visit and perhaps discover more of our story and the story of the faith which has inspired people here through the 45 generations or so from Old Helm's time to the present day.